Hello Astro Nerds! In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the Seastar S50 and how to get the best results from your astrophotography sessions. I've bought the Seastar S50 in 2024, and I've been using it for the past six months whenever weather permitted. As you start this hobby, you soon become very aware of when the best viewing times are, when you should be ready to start shooting, and also face some disappointments when the weather forecast is not accurate and you suddenly have clouds rolling in. The Seastar S50 is a very competent smart telescope. In its price range, there are only two comparable options at the moment, the Dwarf 3 and the Seastar S30, the latter being from the same manufacturer. For its size and specs, it is a very competent telescope. It has a 250 mm focal length a 50 mm aperture, which gives it a focal ratio of f5. The sensor is an IMX462. In my opinion, this is the only true drawback of the scope, as ZWO would have had much better sensors at their disposal that they could have used. Depending on ambient temperature, the battery usually lasts a solid five hours of continuous shooting, although I would recommend having a power bank close by so you do not run out of battery mid-session. Setting up the telescope is fairly straightforward. You just push a button and you're almost ready to go. But there are a few tricks that will certainly help with the quality of photographs you will manage to achieve. So let's look inside the app itself. You can find the app in both Google Play Store and Apple App Store. When you power up the telescope, you will have to connect to the C-Star via Bluetooth and then the scope will switch to its Wi-Fi connection. When you click on the name of your telescope, you will be able to change some key advanced settings. I highly recommend checking regularly for any firmware update ZWO might release. Next, for best results, you need to toggle the anti-dew function of the scope. This will ensure no humidity will build up on the lens and potentially ruining your images when temperature drops. If you go into Advanced Features, there are some options you need to consider here as well. First, it's the exposure time of each frame. The scope gives us three options, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and 30 seconds. In normal operating mode, 10 seconds is the best option to ensure no star trails appear on your images, and the software doesn't discard the images when it tries to stack them. Under good weather conditions, you can try 20 second exposures, but in my experience, this will lead into many dropped frames from your final image. 30 seconds is what I would only recommend when using the C-Star in an equatorial setup, which is not standard built-in. The option to execute enhancements after go-to should also be turned on. This will ensure the scope will calibrate itself prior to shooting. The option to save each frame is, again, another very important one. By default, the telescope will not save each individual frame inside its storage, but if you want to play with the data and use it in software like Cyril, Graxpert or PixInsight, you need to have this option turned on. In the initialization menu, the option to skip horizontal calibration should be turned off. This will ensure the scope will triangulate its position when you start shooting to account for differences in its level in relation to the Earth. Moving forward to the calibration menu, in my experience, this is one of the most important steps you need to take to ensure good quality tracking. The telescope needs to be calibrated mostly for lunar, solar, and planetary observations. For deep sky objects, it will very well do with the plate solving, matching the stars and field rotation. But to ensure the least amount of dropped frames, you need to adjust the level as best as you can to zero. As you can see here, I am way off to one side, and if I start adjusting the legs of the tripod, I will be able to get it level. The focus tab of the telescope is not an option I encourage playing with too much, as it can easily create problems when the Sea Star tries to autofocus on any target making your images blurry. It is best to leave this as default from its factory configuration. From the main screen, you can select various viewing modes, Stargazing will just give you a live view of whatever it is you are looking at with your telescope. Solar System is an option to view the Sun, the Moon and the planets. 
Scenery is a mode you will be using for landscapes and wildlife. Let's go into the Sky Atlas menu. For deep sky objects, this will be the mode you will be using the most. As you can see here, the scope gives you a tonight's best tab that will order the objects based on their location in the sky relative to you, so you can have the best chances to observe them. Then you can further filter the objects by their type and also the catalogue they are assigned to. If I remember correctly, the internal catalogue has about 5,000 entries you can view, so there are plenty objects you can photograph wherever you are on the Earth. Let's select now the Sol Nebula, probably one of the most beautiful objects in the night sky. The app will give you some brief information regarding the object you have selected, the recommended filter to be used, and also its position on the night sky. If you click on the locate target position, it will show you an overlay with what the scope's field of view is in relation to the nebula. Seastar has introduced a much needed function to the scope, the mosaic mode. As you can see, the nebula will not fit in the standard field of view, so we need to click on framing and adjust from there the size of the field of view we will be using. You can go up to two times the standard field of view. Also, you can rotate the area so it will fit the entire object. A good point here is that the telescope and the app will take a lot of time to fit all the frames together into a mosaic. And this integration time is heavily affected by how large you select the mosaic to be, and also how rotated it is. As objects move on the night sky, they also rotate. So if you start to shoot an object that is currently in the southeast and is going to the southwest, the last part of the session will take increasingly longer as the object is currently opposite in rotation as when you started. Another function I like to use is the deep sky stack. If you have multiple sessions on an object and you want to quickly integrate the images in one stacked file, the C-Star can do this for you. You just have to select the folder with the target, select all the images you want to integrate, and just hit OK. I have found that for mosaics, this option works quite well and it gives you a very good file to work with further. The next option C-Star has recently introduced is the planning tab. This being a mostly automated telescope and most people use it from their home, it gives us the option to plan out your entire evening of astrophotography. And it is extremely simple to use. You select create a plan and then you just select the targets you want your telescope to image. Let's say today, I would like the sea star to photograph a galaxy and a nebula for the evening. After creating the plan, you are presented with the same options like in the Sky Atlas view. Here, I'll be searching for a galaxy with good seeing times and a good position in the night sky. Then I can adjust when the session will start and when it will end. I can also adjust the framing as well. The sea star will automatically select the correct filter for the object. Now let's look for a nebula with also good seeing times to fit in the first part of the evening. The Jellyfish Nebula is a good candidate as it is very high in the sky during the winter months and a few good hours on it will yield an impressive result. As it will not fit entirely in the frame, I'll be using the mosaic mode just to be able to get the entire nebulosity. Also, the mosaic mode helps a lot with field rotation even if you set it at 1.1 times the standard field of view. So now we have two objects that are scheduled to be imaged for the evening. For a situation like this, I highly recommend using a power bank or even plugging your scope in. In case the battery runs out, the session will not be saved and you will have to start over again. Now, let's look at some of the photographs I have managed to take this winter. enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing as it will mean a lot to me. I really enjoy doing this and your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you.